Okay, this is a demonstration of what we called other equations in class, what we worked on. But they're really radical equations and some quadratic and form equations. So this is going to be putting all the ideas together that we worked on in class uh, in order to solve these kinds of equations here. So let's take a look at the first one. We have x minus the square root of 2x plus 3 equals 0. And we're going to start off by adding the square root of 2x plus 3 to both sides here. And you end up now with x going to equal square root of 2x plus 3. So now the purpose of really doing this again is because as you recall, whenever you have a um, square root, one single square root on one side of an equation and you want to get rid of it, what you have to do is you have to square both sides. Now, square the left side, square the right side. What this does is it gets rid of the radical that's on the right side, but you now have x squared equal to whatever was under that radical in this case 2x plus 3 is still here. So the radical went away. This is the purpose of squaring both sides. Now you end up with here a quadratic equation because that variable x is now to the second power. And recall we need to subtract the 2x from both sides and then we're going to also subtract the 3 from both sides and what you'll end up with is all the terms will be on the left, which is x squared minus 2x minus 3, and on your right side you have 0. <clears throat> okay, so typically here, if we can, we want to factor the quadratic and use the zero product rule in order to solve this equation. And we'll use that kind of scheme you guys talked about in class, since a lot of you seem to have liked this, this sort of x configuration. Um, you have an a value, you have a c value, and we multiply a and c here. So 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. So we're going to need to, to use this information. And then we're going to use the b value of negative 2 here. So here's the idea, in case you guys you know, forgot, I guess. We're going to need two numbers multiplied together whose product is negative 3, but whose sum is negative 2. And if we think about this, um, one number has to be positive, one has to be negative, and go through the various uh, schemes, I guess. We're going to say a 3 and a 1, and that negative 3 has to be negative because negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, but negative 3 plus 2. Okay, so we have to satisfy both the product and the sum criteria. And this is going to be the numbers that we end up using here. The negative 3 and the positive 1. So how we use that down here is to say x here, x here is 0. These numbers go, this negative 3 goes right in here. And the positive 1 goes right in here. So this is the meaning of finding those two values there. Okay, and so we have factored our quadratic and now we get to use what's called the zero product rule. So by the zero product rule we bring out this t which really just means to separate your piece of paper and you got x minus 3 is 0, x plus 1 is 0. Remember, zero product rule. This first term times the next term equals 0 and what that means is either the x minus 3 term is 0 or it means the x plus 1 term is 0. Right? And this is known again as the zero product rule. Let's actually put that in red. So this is for the benefit of those who may not have been there or been here for this. Um, we're now going to solve these equations here. 
we're going to add our 3 to both sides, subtract our 1, and we finally end up here with x going to be 0 plus 3, which is positive 3, and x is 0 minus 1, which is negative 1. <clears throat> and so these are our solutions, but we do have to be careful here. Okay, um, Whenever you square both sides to solve an equation, like we did here, Okay, we, we squared both sides here. Power 2, power 2. We have to go back to the original equation. Here's the original. That original equation, we have to verify that our solutions are actually valid. And so that means we have to plug these values in again. And we can get away with actually going to this version down here. Okay, we can go with, um, well, the x going to equal square root 2x plus 3, because these are equivalent here. And I think this is probably the better form to check with. So x is 2x plus 3, we're going to use. And that's the square root of 2x plus 3. We're going to plug these values in. So at first here, we're going to plug in 3. And we're going to notice that when we plug in that 3 and we check, we get 3 equals the square root of 2 times 3 plus 3, or 3 does equal the square root of 6 plus 3. 3 equals the square root of 9, so that's a true statement. So that means our 3 is, in fact, a solution. Now, notice, though, when we go back and we plug in the negative 1 here, you're going to end up getting now, in this case, negative 1 equal to the square root 2 times negative 1 plus 3, or negative 1 equals the square root of negative 2 plus 3. Negative 1 is the square root of 1, or negative 1 is the same as 1, and that's not a true statement. Now, what that meant again was throw out the solution of negative 1, it's extraneous. And again, if you're looking back at the book, in set notation, which is really a solution set notation, you're going to see that the only solution here is 3. And this is how we solve that first equation. And again, it's a radical equation. And we get one radical on one side so that we can square both sides. OK. Question 3. The square root of 3x plus 7 equals 3x plus 5. And as you guys can see with this question here, that you already do have the radical on one side here. And so with the same game plan that we've been working on, we're going to square both sides. And be careful, on the right side, you actually have a sum here. That's a sum of two terms. <clears throat> That's going to be meaningful for us um, because, again, what's under the radical here of 3x plus 7 is now by itself. So by squaring both sides, the original equation, we get rid of that single radical. But on the other side, we use the definition here of what it means to have a sum raised to the second power, and that's repeat multiplication. So we're going to have to work on multiplying here. And this is where we use our FOIL, FOIL box. So on this right side now, let's take a look. We're going to have some work to do on that right side. Now, I'm going to bring out the FOIL box. And I have 3x, I have 5, I have 3x and 5. Okay, remember, we're going to multiply every row with every column here. And the first entry, which is our f term, 3x <laughs> times 3x, will give us a 9x squared. 
and 3x times 5 will give them a 15x. 5 times 3x is 15x, and 5 times 5 is actually 25. So on our right-hand side, we end up with a 9x squared. We have a plus 25. However, the O and I terms here, these are like. So we're going to add those terms. That means 15 apples plus another 15 apples. Well, that gives us a 30 apple. Okay, And on the left side here, we still have that 3x plus 7. Now, if you notice that all the terms here you know, involve the variable x, the highest power for that variable x is 2. So we ultimately really have a quadratic equation here. And again, we need all the terms on one side. So we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. And we're going to subtract 7 from both sides. So we get all our terms on one side. Now on the left side here, we get 0. On the right side, we have uh, plus 30 apples minus 30. That's plus 27x. 25 minus 7 is plus 18. And so this is what we have now. OK. I like to have my variables on one side. We don't have to, or I should say the left side. We don't have to, but we're used to seeing it this way. And if we look at every term now, we're going to notice that every one of these values here is a multiple of 9. So we can divide both sides by 9, or factor out a 9, whichever you like. And we end up here with um, 9x squared over that 9 plus 27x over that 9, plus 18 over 9, and that will give me 0 because 0 divided by 9 is 0. We, we can simplify here, and we get x squared plus, this is 3x, and 18 divided by 9 is actually going to be 2 here. So as you see, we do get a quadratic again to solve. And hopefully, that quadratic will be factorable. If we can't factor and solve it by factoring and using the zero product rule, then what we'll have to do is actually use the quadratic formula. So again, bring out your, your favorite x, whatever that is. Now, we need the product of a and c here. This is 2. The b value is 3. It goes here. So remember, we need a product equal to 2, and we need a sum equal to 3. So we need two numbers that satisfy this. And 1 times 2, let's notice, is 2 when we multiply and 3 when we add. So these are the numbers that we use. So our final answer here will be x x is 0. We're going to use the 1 and we're going to use that 2 and they're going to go here and here. Since they're both positive, we put plus 1, we put plus 2. Okay, now the zero product rule. One term times another term and they equal 0. So if we bring out the t here, we get x plus 1 is 0, and we get x plus 2 is 0. Subtract the 1, subtract the 2, and then we obtain x is negative 1 and x is negative 2. These are the solutions here. But remember, we always have to go back to the original equation here. So the original equation here involves um, a radical. We squared both sides. And any time you square both sides, you're going to have to check. So <clears throat> square root 3x plus 7 equals 3x plus 5. So let's check here. 
these values. Okay, we're going to check negative one here. So you're going to plug in a negative one, and I'm going to give you guys a hint here. Let's say, let's kind of look at this here. On the right side, three times negative one will be negative three plus five. This will equal two. This looks like it's going to work out for us, and I'll explain in a second. Three times negative one. Let's go back. It's negative three. Plus seven. Now negative three plus seven is actually four, and the square root of four is two. So this means x is negative one is a solution. Now let's check the next value, meaning let's check negative two. And I want to point out to you a few things that are going to happen here. Maybe one quick way to see whether this might be a solution is the following. When I plug in a negative 2 for x here, we are going to get the square root of 3 times negative 2 plus 7, and that's going to be 3 times negative 2 plus 5, which is negative 6 plus 5, which will be negative 1. So I have a radical ultimately equal to negative 1. Now, this doesn't happen, um, we should say, doesn't happen for any real numbers. So we know there's no real solution. This won't happen for real values. Square roots don't equal to negative 1. If we take a closer look and do the arithmetic, negative 6 plus 7, and they're, squaring, they're saying the square root of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 and again we know that that's simply not the case so we put not equal. So there's no real solution here for the value of x being negative 2 which means this here is not a solution it meant that it was extraneous. So because it's extraneous we get rid of it. It's not a solution. The single solution will be x is negative 1, and we write this in set notation. This is how we answer number 3. Number 5. Square root of 4x plus 5 minus 2 equals 2x minus 7. Remember, the game plan would be to get your radical on one side here, right? So we can ultimately square both sides. So in order to do that, we add the 2 to both sides. And you end up with the square root of 4x plus 5 becomes 2x minus 5. So you have, again, the radical by itself. And you're going to go do and square both sides once again, but I'm going to say be careful because we have a difference here. So on the left side, the radical does go away, and what you're left with now is whatever was under that radical, and in this case it's a 4x plus a 5 equals 2x minus 5. So on the right side, we're going to have to use FOIL or use our FOIL box. And now we get a 2x minus 5, 2x minus 5. So we're going to multiply now every row with every column. 2x times 2x gives us 4x squared. 2x times negative 5 gives us a negative 10x. Negative 5 times 2x is a negative 10x, and negative 5 times negative 5 is a positive 25. So all the terms on the right side now will have 4x squared. There'll be plus 25 here, but then pay attention to this portion here. Your own i terms, we add and get negative 20x. On the left side, we have 4x plus 5. So as you notice, we have a 
quadratic equation, the highest power for our variable x is 2. And what we're going to need to do is get all the terms on one side. So we're going to subtract 4x from both sides. We're going to subtract 5 from both sides. We'll get 0 equals 4x squared minus 24x plus 20. And again, I like having my terms on the left. So I'm going to rewrite this and set this equal to 0. If you notice, every term here is divisible by 4. Divide the left by 4, divide the right by 4. So we end up with 4x squared divided by 4 minus 24x divided by 4 plus 20 divided by 4 equals 0. Now 4 over 4 is gone. You have x squared minus 6x plus 5 equals 0. We want to solve this hopefully by factoring, and if we can't factor, we can certainly use the quadratic formula. But you guys already know that even if you chose to use the quadratic formula at this point, you can, you're free to do that. So this can be done also by simply using that quadratic formula, because the quadratic formula solves everything. So bringing out your x, the, the tool you guys like to try to factor, again, we check here. This is my a value, here's my c value, here's my b value. We multiply a with c, and we'll get 5. And b is negative 6. So remember, we need two numbers multiplied together is positive 5, but yet when added is negative 6. So they both have to be negative because a negative times a negative is a positive, but yet when we add them, it'll be a negative. So if we think of maybe 5 and 1, they both have to be negative. We know negative 5 times negative 1 is in fact positive 5, and negative 5 plus negative 1 is in, is in fact negative 6. So these are the answers here. These are the solutions. So what that ends up being here is you have that x times this x. It's 0. We're going to use this negative 5 here. And we're going to use the negative 1 here. So again, the 0 product rule. The first term times the next term here equals 0. Now that means either that first term was 0 or it means that the second term is 0. So solving these equations now, add 5, add 1, we get x is 5 and we'll get x is 1. These are our two solutions here. So because we actually had to square both sides again, right over here. We have to verify our solutions are, in fact, solutions. And what we can do is, let's go back here. Let's undo all the artwork. We can actually use this equation to verify our solutions, or we can actually use the original equation. And I suggest use whatever is easiest for you. I think personally, the second one is easiest. So we have the square root of 4x plus 5 is 2x minus 5. Now let's plug in the values. We get the square root of 4 times 5, which is 20, 
plus 5 will equal 2 times 5, which is 10, minus 5. We get the square root of 25 becomes 5. This is true. So 5 is a solution. The square root of 4 plus 5 equals 2x minus 5. Let's now check positive 1. So plug in 1 here. We end up with the square root of 4 plus 5, which is 9, and then 2 times 1, which is 2, minus 5. We get the square root of 9 is minus 3. That means 3 is negative 3. We know that's actually not the case. So we have to say positive 1 is an extraneous solution. So the only solution here would be 5. Number 7. The square root of x minus the square root of x minus 5 is 1. Now, we've been squaring both sides here to get a radical by itself. But what I'll say here is, and I'll remind you, if you try to square both sides here, well, you're going to get something interesting. Here's what I'd recommend. The interesting thing would be, because you have actually a difference, you're going to have to use FOIL. And I'm going to make a recommendation here. I'm going to suggest here, since we want to get x by itself, add the radical to both sides here. So we have the square root of x will be the square root of x minus 5 plus 1. So now, when we square both sides, The radical here will go away. So we'll get we'll get x by itself on the left here. But on the right, we have to use the fact that we are actually squaring a sum here. So because we have a sum here, you're going to have to use FOIL here to actually multiply and we'll use a FOIL box. So what's under the radical over here is x. We have that by itself, so that's the idea. You got rid of one of the radicals at the very least, um, and if you, did it, if you squared both sides in the other problem, you can still do it that way. Uh, maybe you'll get um, radicals. You know, you're gonna be pretty much do the same kind of work here. So they're somewhat equivalent, but I like to get rid of a radical as soon as possible. And so now we get to use our FOIL box. And let's see what we get. So I might have to draw a much bigger FOIL box here for us. Multiply the first terms together. Multiply the outer and inner and last terms here. All right, let's see what we get. Now remember, the square root times the square root gets rid of the radical. The square root of x minus 5 times 1 is the square root of x minus 5. 1 times the square root of x minus 5, square root of x minus 5. 1 times 1 will be 1. And at this point again, you guys will notice that you still have, for your O and I terms here in the FOIL box, we have like terms to combine. So all together, here's what we have. x on the left will be x minus 5 plus 2 of those radicals plus 1. Now we're going to simplify where we can, and the only place where we can simplify here is to actually combine these terms. 
So on our left side, we get x, and that'll equal x plus 2 square root of x minus 5 minus 4. Okay, and here's what we're going to try to do now. We're going to try to solve here for this radical. And we're going to keep the 2 with it. Um, or I should really just say, if you can, just solve for the radical. And in order to do that, we're going to get, get that radical by itself. We're going to have to subtract x from both sides and add 4 to both sides. So on our left side, we have now 4 because our x minus x is gone. It's 0. We're just left with a 4. And that'll be on the other side as well. x minus x. x is gone. And so we have 2 times the square root of x minus 5. And then notice the negative 4 plus 4. That's gone. So this is our new equation. And at this point, we can divide both sides now by 2. And we end up with 2 equals the square root of x minus 5 because our 2's cancel. And as you guys know, I like putting my values of x on the left side because we're used to seeing that. So what this process did for us is it took us from getting rid of this first radical. We did it here. And by algebra, FOIL, we end up with a second equation that involves a radi radical. This is what it simplifies to. So the idea now would be, how do we get rid of this last radical? And as you guys know, you simply square both sides again. So what's under this radical is x minus 5. And that goes away. And you simply have x minus 5 becomes 2 squared. Or x minus 5 is 4. If you add 5 to both sides, we end up with x equal to 9. Now remember, since we were squaring both sides a couple of times here, we have to go back to the original equation to verify that this is actually a solution. So you can go to this first equation, or this equation here. It doesn't matter. I'll go to the original. It's not too bad. So we have the square root of x equals the square root of x minus 5. And I apologize. That's not equals. Square root of x minus. So we're going to plug in the 9 here. And here, we end up with the square root of 9 minus the square root of 9 minus 5 is 1. This is 3 minus, we'll put it here. The square root of 4 is 1. 3 minus 2 is 1, and in fact, that is true. So our solution here is 9. So we verified that x is 9 is an actual solution. Okay. Number nine. The cube root of 4x plus 3 equals the cube root of 2x minus 1. Now, since our index here, if we take a closer look, is 3. If you like, you can write this as 4x plus 3 to the 1 third and 2x minus 1 to the 1 third, but it doesn't matter. Because what we're going to do here is we're going to cube now both sides. So you can do it with the original or you can do it with this form. The point I'm making is that 1 third times 3, like 1 third times 3 on the other side, 
is going to be 1. So the radical goes away. So we get 4x plus 3 equals 2x minus 1. And again, some people go straight to the original since we have radicals that are alone on opposite sides of our equation. Yes, you could just cube both sides. And now what you have here is not a quadratic, but you have a linear equation. This is the equation we have to solve. Okay, subtract 2x from both sides. We get 2x plus 3 equals negative 1. Subtract 3 from both sides. 2x is negative 4. Divide both sides now by 2, here's what you get. x is negative 2. Okay. Since the solution is negative 2 here, you get the cube root of 4x plus 3 is the cube root of 2x minus 1. Now, we had to check our solutions because essentially you can't have the square root of any value be negative and have it be a real number. So here, you're going to notice that if we plug in negative 2 now, since we're taking cube roots here and here, you're going to find that you're going to get probably that you're going to actually get uh, a true statement here. So let's double check that. Okay, so we're going to get now the cube root of 4 times negative 2, negative 8 plus 3 should equal the cube root of 2 times negative 3 will be negative 6 minus 1. So let's double check. This gives us the cube root of negative 5 is the cube root of negative 7. Well, let's double check to see we did everything okay. Ah, here's a problem. negative 2 here. So this is negative 4. Okay. Well, let's double check. Yeah, negative 4. And negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Okay. So what I want to say here is that, and remind you guys that, you can take the cube root of a negative and that still be a real number. Let's write this a little nicer cube root of negative 5 because you did the arithmetic here negative 4 minus 1 and over here and this is the same number and you could take cube roots of negatives so this is an is in fact a true statement here okay so that's true which means our only solution is that x is negative 2 Number 11, cube root of 5x squared minus 6x plus 2, which is the cube root of, or I should say minus the cube root of just x. That equals 0. So we're going to add the cube root of x here to both sides so that we can get two cube roots equal to each other. Cube root 
5x squared minus 6x plus 2 is a cube root now of x. So now when we cube both sides here, raised to the power 3, what happens is the radical goes away. Oops. And whatever is under that radical on both sides is going to be your equation. 5x squared minus 6x plus 2 is going to give us x. Because this is the effect of cubing a cube root. It's gone. Now, what you'll notice again is you get a nice quadratic equation. And we're going to now have to subtract x from both sides. And you have 5x squared minus 7x plus 2 is 0. Here's your quadratic equation. Okay, now remember, we're going to have to solve this by factoring. So here's A, here's B, and here's C. So you could look at, or you can use any technique you guys used in your past about factoring. This is, by the way, um, when I teach this course, this is a chicken, this is not a chicken soup recipe, it's a beef stew, but okay. We're going to take the 5 and the 2, and that's 10, and we're going to use the fact that this is negative 7. Again, we need two numbers whose product is positive 10, but whose sum is negative. And the only way you can do that is if both numbers are negative, because a negative times a negative is positive, as the sum has to be negative. Because a negative plus a negative will give you a negative. So if we look, use 2 and 5, but we have to make them both negative, we're going to see that, sure enough, for the product, negative 2 times negative 5 will give us positive 10. And for the sum here, negative 2 plus negative 5 is, in fact, negative 7. Okay, so this is the, this is the pair that will work. Good. These are the numbers that we're going to use here. But remember, when you go back and you use this, we had x, we have x, that equals 0. When you go back and you use this here, you're going to plug these numbers here, negative 2. You're going to plug these numbers here, negative 5. You're going to go back and use that a value, if you guys recall. We're going to divide now these answers by 5. Remember, this is your technique. And for one of the answers, not the first one, but we get a nice whole number here. And so that, that will be x minus 1 equals 0. So that's good. But over here, we don't get a whole number. And we're going to use that 5 again. Remember what we do with this 5. We simply put it up here inside the radical next to the x. So what you'll have now then would be instead of the x minus 2 fifths, we'll have the 5x now minus 2. So this is your technique. This is what you did. You took this number 5 here, and you just simply put it, let's do that again, you just simply put it next to the x here, and you kept the negative 2. So you did factor, and now by the zero product rule, we bring out the t here, and you get that 5x minus 2 is 0, the first term. You get x minus 1 is 0, the second term, because whenever you have one term multiplied with another term and they equal 0, you just simply put the two terms together. 
or we should say it gives us two linear equations to solve, really. Sorry. That's what's going on. So you solve these. You're going to add 2 to both sides. Here you'll add 1 to both sides. So we'll get 5x is 2. x is 1. There is a solution. Divide both numbers by 5. And we get now x will be 2 fifths. Now, I'm going to remind you guys again, we actually cube both sides. So we don't have to have the same concern like we had in the past. We don't have to check these. 2 fifths, positive 1, and you're done. OK. Number 13. The fourth root of 2x minus 3 is 4. Now to get rid of this radical here, let's let's be careful. You actually have a fourth root. So we're going to have to raise both sides now to the fourth power to get rid of the radical. And you're going to be left with whatever was under the radical. You're going to now have 2x minus 3 would be 4 to the fourth power here. Okay, so raise both sides to the fourth power, and 2x minus 3 becomes 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. If you don't know what this is, you can say, is that 16 times 16? It is, and break out your multiplication algorithm. 6, 3, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 3 is 9. A 6 and a 1, I get 6, 5, 2. 256. So that equals 256. So what you do now here is you add that 3 to both sides, and you end up with 2x equals 259. And divide both sides now by 2, we get x is going to be 259 over 2. Okay, here's our solution. Now, since we raised this to the fourth power, let's double check everything to make sure everything's okay. Looks good to me. Okay, since we raised both sides to an even power here, four, we have to make sure that this is going to be a solution here. So go back to the original. Fourth root, 2x minus 3 is 4. We plug in 259 over 2. Here's what we end up with. Fourth root of 259 now minus 3 is 4. Or we can say the fourth root of 256 is 4. Now that's true. That's true because we did the multiplication here as this here was 4 to the fourth power. So our solution is in fact 259 over 2. And in fact probably this is where some people are going to have some questions here in this arithmetic. So if you want to look at the detail, 2 times 259 over 2 minus 3 gets rid of those 2's. And under the radical here, you did have 259 minus 3, which is the fourth root of 256, and that does equal 4. And you're done. So here's 13. <clears throat> 15. fourth root x squared plus 2x equals the fourth root of 3. So as you guys can see here, what we'll have to do now is raise both, raise both sides to the fourth power. And again, what's left here will be 
x squared plus 2x equal to 3. This is going to get rid of our single radical. And again, you notice you have a quadratic. So you're going to subtract 3 from both sides. You end up here with x squared plus 2x minus 3 is 0. And again, you're going to factor this. Now, some of you guys like that x box, whatever that is. Negative 3, positive 2. You need the product. You need the sum again. Remember, this was that a value. This is b, and this was c. So I need two numbers multiplied together will be negative 3, but when added is positive 2. So one of them is negative and one's positive, let's say 3 and 1, negative 1. So 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 3 plus negative 1 is in fact positive 2. So we're going to use these numbers here. So you have this x, x. These are the numbers that we use. Positive 3 negative 1. x plus 3 is 0. x minus 1 is 0 by the 0 product rule. Subtract my 3, add my 1. x is negative 3 is a solution. x is positive 1 is a solution. So if we go back again now to the original questions here, We just plug this in because remember, anytime we raise both sides to a even power, in this case was, this was positive 4, we actually have to check our solutions. So um, let's write this stuff down here. 4th root of x squared plus 2x is the 4th root of 3. Let's plug in negative 3 here. Here's what you end up with. 4th root negative 3 squared plus 2 times negative 3. 4th root of 3. 4th root of 9 minus 6 is the 4th root of 3. And we see that the 4th root of 3 is in fact the 4th root of 3. 9 minus 6 is 3. This checks out. Do the same now for the second solution here. This time you plug in 1. 4th root of 1 squared plus 2 times 1 is the 4th root of 3. 4th root of 1 plus 2 is the 4th root of 3. And we end up getting the 4th root of 3 does in fact become the 4th root of 3, and that's true as well. So we have two solutions here. Negative 3, positive 1. Seventeen. X to the three halves is the value eight. Now we're going to have to get rid of a rational exponent, three halves. Now let's recall again that we did in lecture that whenever we multiply what we call reciprocals together, the answer is one, because a times b is a b, and b times a is b a and we can cancel these terms, that leaves us with just one. So we're going to use this idea. So we're going to raise both sides now to the power that's reciprocal of 3 halves, and that'll be 2 thirds. Because again, when we multiply over here, 
3 halves times 2 thirds, that answer is 1. So x will be now 8 to the 2 thirds power. And now you're going to look at the homework you did on how to evaluate these. This is where that homework pays off. So remember, at this point, we're going to use, whenever you have a base to a fraction power, let's say m over n, we're going to use the b to the 1 over n to the m form. That means, here's what we get. 8 to the 2 thirds becomes the cube root of 8 but that means everything is squared. Here, the cube root of 8 is 2. This is what we're looking at. But don't forget you have a power outside here of 2. So this gives us 2 squared, which is the value 4. In other words, x is the value 4 here. And we're done. Number 19. x to the 3 halves is negative 27. Raising the power of both sides to the reciprocal of 3 halves, well, the reciprocal of 3 halves is 2 thirds. This gives us x equal to negative 27 to the third, 2 thirds power. So let's take a look. And by definition, again, this will be negative 27 to the 1 third power, everything squared. And that's the cube root now of negative 27. And we're going to square these things. The cube root of negative 27 is, in fact, negative 3. We're going to square negative 3, and we get positive 9 here. So this means x is positive 9. Now, let's check this here. Remember, x here is, or we should say the original question is, the following. x to the 3 halves is negative 27. So if I check this and say, plug in 9 here for x, we end up with 9 to the 3 halves is negative 27, which we know will be 9 to the 1 half cube is negative 27, which says square root of 9 cubed is negative 27, which means 3 cubed is negative 27, or 27 is negative 27. This is not the case. This is not a solution, it's extraneous. So we throw it out. So if we throw out the only solution here, we can say the solution set is empty. Okay, there's no real solution here. You can write that down. No real solution. And you're done. Twenty one. X to the two thirds equals twenty five. We're going to raise both sides now to, re to the recipro reciprocal power of three halves, and we'll end up with X equal twenty five to the three halves power because 
3 halves times 2 thirds is 1. Okay. So we're going to need to know or evaluate 25 to the 3 halves power. That'll be 25 to the 1 half power raised to the third, which is the square root of 25 raised to the third, which would be 5 cubed, better known as 125. So my x value here is 125. So if you go back and check for the original question, x to the 2 thirds is 25, and we use now 125 here. We end up getting 125 to the 2 thirds power is 25, or you say 125 to the 1 third power squared is 25. Cube root of 125 squared is 25, and that's 5 squared is 25. That's a true statement. So your solution is 125. So that one's fine. Twenty-three. X to the three-fourths power gives you sixty-four. We're going to raise both sides to, re to the reciprocal of three-fourths, which is four-thirds. And we get x here equal to 6 fourths to the 4 third power. Because again, when I multiply my powers together, 3 fourths times 4 thirds is 1. So we just have to now evaluate this by doing some computation here. 64 to the 1 third power raised to the 4th cube root of 64 raised to the fourth. And then here, the cube root of 64 would be, um, let's double check, for cube root of 64. We might say that this possibly is what? Four, so let's note. Four times four times four, which is 16 times four, is 64. So we were correct here. And again, do your computation. Final answer is 4 to the 4th. And 4 to the 4th here is 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So we have to multiply another one of these 4s. Let's write this down here. Let's do this computation. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. 16 times 16, if you like. Multiply these. 6, 3. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 3 is 9. 1 times 6 is 6 plus 1. 6, 15, 256. So our final answer is x equals 256. And again, you can check this if you like, and you're going to find that it will be a solution. Number 25. x to the 4 thirds power equals 16. Again, we have the 4 thirds power. We're going to raise both sides now to the 3 fourths power. And if you multiply 4 thirds with 3 fourths, you're going to get a 1. So now we have x equals 16 to the 3 fourths power. To evaluate 16 to the 3 fourths, this is 16 to the 1 fourth, everything cubed. The fourth root of 16, this is cubed. And the fourth root of 16 is actually 2, so we have 2 cubed. And then 2 cubed is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. So x here is 8. You can check it, and you'll find that this will be a solution.
27. 27 is x plus 5 raised to the 2 thirds power is 16. You're going to raise both sides now to the 3 halves power here, the reciprocal of 2 thirds. And again, you're going to notice that 2 thirds times 3 halves is 1. And this will leave us simply with x plus 5 to the first power is 16 to the 3 halves power. Or we say x plus 5 is 16 now to the 3 halves power. So by definition here of 16 to the 3 halves power, we get 16 to the 1 half raised to the third, the square root of 16 raised to the third, or we should say 4 raised to the third. Now this is 4 times 4 times 4, which is 16 times 4, which is 64. Now our equation becomes x plus 5 is 64. Subtract your 5 now and we end up with x being 59. This here is our solution. Twenty nine X minus eight to the three halves power becomes negative sixty four. We're going to raise both sides to the reciprocal of three halves, and that's going to be two thirds. On the left, the radical goes away, or we should remind you that 2 thirds times 3 halves is 1. So we're going to have x minus 8 equals negative 64 to the 2 thirds power. So we're going to have to evaluate this here. Negative 64 to the 1 third power raised to the second power, which will give you the cube root of negative 64, everything squared, which is negative 4 to the second power, better known as 16. We get x minus 8 is 16 now, because what we did was we deduced what the value of negative 64 to the 2 thirds power will be. Now. We get a linear equation that we solve by adding 8 to both sides, and now we get x equal to 16 plus 8, which is 24. Now if we go back to the original equation here, to check our solution here, let's go back and erase everything that we did. We're going to have to plug this in to see if this is actually a, a solution. So we're going to plug in here 24 for x. Now let's see what we get when we do that. We get 24 minus 8 to the 3 halves power is supposed to be a negative 64. This means 16 to the 3 halves power is a negative uh, 64 here. Let's go back. Which means 16 to the 1 half power raised to the third is negative 64. Or the square root of 16 to the third power is negative 64. 4 to the third is negative 64, and that means 64 is negative 64. We know that's not the case, that that's not equal. So that means our solution of 24 is extraneous. That means 
the solution set here is going to be empty. And we could write that with the empty set symbol, or we can simply say no real solution here. So this way there was a check here. We checked everything and we found that the solution of 24 is not in fact a solution. This is the answer for 29. Thirty one X plus three to the three fourths power minus seven is a hundred and eighteen. We're going to add seven to both sides here. We get X plus three to the three fourths power is one twenty five. Now, the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. So we raise both sides to the 4 thirds power. And on the left here, when we multiply our 3 fourths with 4 thirds, we end up with x plus 3 to the first power becomes 125 to the 4 thirds power, or x plus 3 is 125 to the 4 thirds power. So when I evaluate, by definition, 125 to the 4 thirds power, this gives me 125 to the 1 third power raised to the fourth, or the cube root of 125 raised to the fourth power. The cube root of 125 is 5. This is 5 to the fourth, which is 5 times 5 times 5. We can take 25 times 25 here, and we multiply these. 25, 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 5, 2, 6. So the right side of our equation is just simply 625. We're going to subtract 3 from both sides here. We end up with x equal to 622 and you're done. This is our solution for 31. It's our solution. Thirty-three. x minus four to the two fifths plus eight is 57. We're going to subtract 8 to, from both sides here. And we get x minus 4 to the 2 fifths power becomes 57 minus 8 is 49. So we're going to have to raise both sides now to the reciprocal of 2 fifths which is 5 halves. 2 fifths times 5 halves here will be 1, so we get x minus 4 now by itself is 49 to the 5 halves power. So we're going to have to evaluate here 49 to the 5 halves, and by definition that's 49 to the 1 half raised to the 5th power which is the square root of 49 raised to the fifth power, which would be 7 to the fifth power. So this would be 7 times 7 times 7 times 7. We have 2, 3, we got 5 of these 7s. And when you perform your arithmetic for 7 to the fifth power, you're going to find that you get 1,600, or I should say 16,000, 807. That's on my right side. So I get x minus 4 is 1,000 or 16,807. I apologize there. When you add your 4 to both sides, you get x is 16,800 and 
11. Here is our solution. 16,811. This is for number 33.